Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Noel Hestalis. Noel, tell them what you do. You were the judge today at Geneva Concourse. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm the judge and I judge some of these cars. We've got all the Chrysler 300 letter cars, 1955 through 1964, and our 1965 300L, which you can see on Lou's channel, owned by Roland Westra out of Rockford. Roland had a little bit of a health uh, being under the weather, so he couldn't make it today. So let's go see all the cars, and with that being said, you were responsible for bringing the cars, so you know all the people. Let's go have some fun. So we'll put that down, and let's take a look at the first car. So Noel, hop on this side, and hop on this side, talk right there. What's the first one we have here? Okay, so this is a 1964 Chrysler 300K Coupe. It was probably the highest production of all the, the Chrysler 300 letter cars uh, because Chrysler lowered the base price of these and then made everything optional, a whole lot of options. This car has a single four barrel with the 413, but uh, these also had an optional cross ram. The short ram uh, is an option, but this is not one of those. This car came out of uh, outside of Morris, Illinois. I saw this car at a cruise night in Seneca, Illinois a couple years ago, owned by Donnie Carr, and Donnie was gracious enough to bring it up today. And Let me do one quick thing. I'm going to walk around and get the backs. You can see the 1964s had a little bit of a fin. The 1963s and 64s were by a different designer. Okay. And, and let's hop, let's hop the uh, fence on this one. Okay. We're going to do the back and we'll turn around and do the front. What do we okay. have here? This one is a 1964, again, 300K convertible, owned by Don Nissen, okay. um, River Forest, Illinois. Don's had this a few years. Beautiful car, super straight. Uh, it is a convertible and uh, also has a single four barrel 413. Great I'm going to just car. feature this one because we're back here and we have no people. And then I'm going to go around to the front. All right, let's go feature the front. We've got what letter is this? No, this is the 300K. This is the rarest of all the 300. This one. 400 of these were made only in a coupe. And this had the same 413 cubic inch engine. The short ram is the version of the engine. Let's take it this side. Okay. I'm going to do this. Go ahead. A little easier to see. You'll notice that the 63 had the rounded tail lights. I actually learned how to drive them on my Polk 63 Chrysler, and it had no fins compared to the 64 that had the real subtle fins. Let's go take a look at the front of this one. The 1963 Chrysler was the first of the Chryslers with an automatic transmission to actually have park. So, had that beautiful grill. The grills were a little bit different between 1964 that had the red, white, and blue star and the 63 that just has the, the round emblem. The, the J. Some people think this 300J is the best performing of all. The real hot rod, 308, uh, 300 horsepower, 400. I'm sorry, 380 horsepower. All right, Henry Bonnick brought this out of Indiana, Munster, Indiana. Beautiful white 300 age convertible. Since we're going down in years, this is the first year that the Chrysler 300 letter cars were on the shorter uh, Chrysler Windsor Newport 122-inch uh, uh, wheelbase as opposed to the New Yorker wheelbase, which we'll see on the older cars. Uh, again, a beautiful white convertible. You'll notice this is the first year that there were no fins. They had a similar front end to the 1961 Chrysler 300, but the fins were gone and it was a shorter car. I'm going to step through and we're going to look at the back of both of these. Okay. Tell us what this one is while we got room. This is a 1961 300G. Um, now we've got our fins back. Very popular. The fins are back. The canted headlights. The seats on these up through 1961 
And this is my friend Brian Frank's car out of Wisconsin. Well, I won't mind that I display the swivel seats. 1959 to 1961 Chrysler 300s had the swivel seats as standard, and those were optional on the other uh, letter cars. You can see the full-length console, the push-button trans, first, second, neutral, drive, neutral, reverse. There's no park on these from 62 earlier, so you've got to use the emergency brake. This has the tachometer on the console. And a wonderful Absolutely. instrumentation pod. Yep. That pod is called the Astrodome. The Astrodome. And that dome has no bulbs in it. It's really? high voltage, electroluminescent, with the phosphorescent paint on the dials. It grows, it glows a beautiful uh, blue-green at night. It's just absolutely great at night. So you can see the 300H designated by the little H here on the trunk. And yeah, that, that's a finless car. But you can see on the 62s, most of the taillight lenses are become milky and really deteriorated. Henry's car has really got beautiful taillight lenses. So now we're going back to the So we're the back fins. in 61 with the fins. In 61, they moved the taillights, which we'll see for the 1960s, from up here, the boomerang taillights, down here in the lower fender corner, and the backup lights are up on top. We've got the convertible version. And then this is the convertible. This is my friend John Beecham out of Detroit. Uh, I have a particular affinity to this car because me and my white 300F driver condition car and John in this beautifully restored 300G convertible, one of 337 originally produced. We've driven our cars together. John's out of Detroit area and I'm out of the Chicago area. We've driven to El Alamogordo, New Mexico, and Geneva, New York, and Lynchburg, Virginia last fall, and all points in between. I noticed no 300 here, but a 300 there. Right, some of the 61s have the 300 emblem on the trunk and some don't. And there's really no rhyme or reason, early production, late production, but you just see that. And again, this car has been beautifully restored. Um, when we drove these cars out to White Sands, New Mexico, it poured rain seven of the nine days. You'll see that the speedometer and the gauges in the dome, and the speedometer goes up to 150 miles an hour. So the 300s were really the high performance car. And the cross ram manifold, the cast aluminum, 30 inch runners with the dual Carter AFBs. The cross rams were standard through 1961, became optional in 1962, standard again in 63, and optional in 64. And this car is just a spectacular restoration. So here's the same car and the coupe. Right, beautiful And that coupe. convertible. Yes, right. Okay. We got. Tell me about this one right oh, here. Oh, we're into the yeah. 1960, the 300F. This was the first year of Chrysler's unibody, so it's an entirely different style. It was an entirely different style from uh, the previous year, 59 and earlier. The 1960, some of the design features got the fake or the faux vents on the hood. There were 300 only. And it's got the toilet seat. Chrysler called it the flight swept deck lid on the back. It's got the spectacular boomerang taillights which are also seen on many hot rods. The hot rodders of the day and today even love those taillights. You know, some people look at this as the epitome of Chrysler style with a single design line going from the tip of the taillight all the way to the front and ramping around the front tire. So, again, this car has the swivel seats, 150 mile an hour speedometer, wonderful heavy duty suspension for long distance cruising. That wonderful Chrysler emblem in the back. And my buddy Frank Troost out of uh, Hillside, Oak Brook, Illinois. Now we're looking at this flat. Chrysler 300F convertible. This particular car was the last 300F convertible to roll off the assembly line for the 1960, uh, 
production year. And it's fully loaded with just about every option that Chrysler has offered. It's a very pricey restoration, but beautifully done. Then you don't have to strap. Yeah. That's for a last, lady. Uh, well, about, he's had the car on the road for about the last two years. But prior to that, about nine years for the restoration to be completed. So it's an absolutely stunning example of the 1963 This 1960 300F convertible is owned by Ken Nagel. I'm not very familiar with the car. This was code PP1, so that's Toyota red car, although the car current color is more of a plum color, so. I don't know where along the way someone picked out a different color for the uh, paint, but anyway, it's a beautiful looking car. And now we get into the more rare cars. Uh, here's a 1959 uh, 300E. It's the first year for the wedge motor. The Hemi was gone by 1959. And uh, you know, I think there were roughly 500 or so of these. Hi. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good to see you. This car did have the swivel seats, but it had the same body lines as the 1957 to 59. So this is a 59. It's the only year with the red anodized grill and a little 300 emblem, the, the script on the side of the, the hood opening here. This is probably the rarest of all the cars here. It's one of 21 thought to be currently in existence and one of only 125 1959 Chrysler 300 convertibles to be produced. Bob Brown and George Collar brought this car down from Wisconsin Rapids, uh, trailered it down yesterday, and it's, uh, they have a number of rare old Mopars, and this is among the rarest of all. Wonderful performance. Now we have a 300D, so 1958, and uh, as we've read in the print, uh, 1958 was a recession year, so not a lot of cars were producing. This is one of 618 cars that were uh, produced for 300Ds. This one is in the rare and beautiful Tahitian coral color, which is really a beautiful color, one of the nicest of the, uh, the pastel colors to exist in the 1950s. It's the last year of the Hemi, it's got the 392 cubic inch Hemi, and it's a real performer. I'm glad you got Oh yeah. You know, and Rita Miller, they're right there off of Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, yesterday. And here, we have a 1958 Chrysler 300D convertible. Uh, they're all metal, I mean, most of them. One of only 191 to be produced. Bob Brown and George Collar also brought this one down from Wisconsin Rapids. This is probably one of the cars they've had the longest, and uh, it's probably the longest of any of their cars that hasn't undergone restoration recently, but it's still in beautiful condition. I've actually driven this car, and it runs like a beast. It just <laughs> runs absolutely good. So, well, let's walk back here a second. Sure. You can notice the 19, uh, the difference is the grills were the same for 57 and 58, but 58, they brought the trim back to make it more aerodynamic. If you look on the 57, this had more of a roof hangover here, so it was less aerodynamic. And also on the taillights. The 1958 has like half taillights there. They're, they're smaller taillights and the full-size bezel. And then when we look at 1957 over here, It's got the full taillights, so that's also a design feature of the, uh, the 1957, which is the first year of this Virgil Exner styling. Now this car is Gauguin Red, and my friend uh, Keith Boonstra brought this down from uh, Holland, Michigan yesterday. This one. What do we have here? And this is also a 1957 300D, or 300C convertible. This one is owned by Terry Berg out of locally here in Berkeley, Illinois, and his wife Chloe. Terry's father bought this car brand new. 
So this car has been owned in the family since brand new. And Terry, I don't know, you said this car's never been restored? Rock uh, corner panels were replaced with rusted out. Mm -hmm. it painted, that's it. So and it's just an amazing, amazing piece of history here. And the next one is another 1957 300C convertible. This one's owned by Wayne Kaczynski out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, was trailer down here yesterday. Again, Paul Lewis painted this car and also painted John Beegian's 61 uh, uh, 300G convertible. This car scored the second highest in Concord judging in the history of our Chrysler 300 Club. It scored 950 points. So this 57 is an absolute spectacular. It's about as original as it comes. And now we've moved down to 1956. The Chrysler 300B, owned, uh, brought here by Mark Oberman out of uh, Niles, Illinois. Mark also had the 300J. As you can see, this is just a whole different body style, different body look. In 1955, Chrysler introduced their new line of cars because prior to that, their styling was very stodgy and people weren't buying their cars at all for their styling. But uh, the 55 and the 56 was Chrysler's, uh, the marketing for these cars was the $100 million look. And this car has the very rare torque flight transmission. So if I can show you, most of the 300Bs had, this was the first year of the push button trans also, had low drive, neutral and reverse. This car you can see first, second, drive, neutral and reverse. So this is the three speed torque light, which is a very rare car for the year 1956. Still has 150 mile an hour speedometer. The dashes were the same for 55 and 56, except for the push buttons on 55, 56, and then there was a shift lever on the 55. And the 56s had more of a fin and a different tail like treat. Let's take a look at the fronts of these before second year and this had this was on the Chrysler Windsor body the New Yorker and the Windsor at the time had the same wheelbase so there wasn't a shorter and a longer wheelbase and this had the, the Chrysler Imperial grill on it and they put the 300 B emblem on the front this had the 354 cubic inch Hemi the 1957s had the 392 cubic inch Hemi. So this was the second of the letter cars, and the first actually to have the suffix of a letter, the 300B. And then if we can walk over here, let's take a look at the front of these ones. Yeah, sure. Sure, when everything's really, yeah. Like stars, it's going to be dark. And 57 only had those strange air cleaners that came off the dual carburetor, four barrel carburetor. No, these were always an interesting look. Let's go take a look at the originals. Okay. But like the New Yorker, those weird rings and the Right. And then the first of the mark is this circle here, where we have all three standard colors for 1955. The 1955 Chrysler 300. The name came from the 300 horsepower. This was the first production car to have 300 horsepower, hence the name. So there's real meaning to the name. Again, the Windsor body with the, the less trim, the New Yorker had more elaborate side trim. We had the big in-your-face in uh, Chrysler Imperial grill and the front emblem there with the checkered flag. Have a great day. This car was brought up by Rick Larson from Canals Motors. This car, again, scored very highly in our concourse judging uh, a few years ago when we got our meet in St. Charles, Illinois. You notice these cars, virtually all of them have the standard tan leather interior. That started in 55, and that ran all the way through 1962. Not a lot of trim, but you can see the 300 on the, the gas cap. And those taillights, I grew up with the 55 Windsor that my folks had, are my absolute favorites. I just love those 1955 Chrysler taillights. 
Next over is a white. Actually, the, the color name for this was platinum. They didn't have a color called white in 1955. It's platinum, which had a tight, a touch of a green tinge to it. It's uh, owned by Bob Letter in his collection, which is local here. These cars came with regular hubcaps, but they have the, back in the day, the wheels were made by motor companies, so they were motor wheels subsequently reproduced by Kelsey Hayes. And these have the, again, the 300 horsepower, 331 cubic inch Hemi. These had a very stiff suspension. You know, Carl Keekafer campaigned these 55s and the 56 in NASCAR and won about 60% of all the NASCAR races back in the day. So the France uh, family wasn't real thrilled that he was taking home all the checkered flags, and so uh, he ended his, his uh, NASCAR career after the 56 season. And this is my favorite of all the colors for the 55s, Tango Red. This car was owned, formerly owned by Bob Lutz, uh, CEO of Chrysler. Uh, he did some modifications to it, but you can see it just uh, gleaming in its tangled red glory. And it's an absolutely beautiful car. And these cars only came in a coupe, the 55, this did the 56. Well, Noah, thank you for taking us through the letters. Technically, B, the original, and then B all the way through the photograph of L. What a treat. Thanks for being on my car story. Thank you. We'll appreciate it.